click the bell icon to turn on notifications. We've made the files the instructor uses in this tutorial available for free. Just click the link below in the video details to get these. Welcome everyone, my name is Dave Casuto and I will be your instructor for this Introduction to Illustrator class. Well, what are you going to learn in this class? Well, since this is an introduction class, we start from the beginning and learn about the basics. Well, that's going to start off with just really understanding the workspace of Illustrator, really understanding what's what, where things are, but most importantly, how we can kind of customize the program to make it our own. But then very quickly, we get into some of the illustration tools, understanding basic shapes, how we can work with basic shapes to make more complex shapes, working with the Shape Builder tools and Pathfinder and Compound Shapes, but also working with the very important Direct Selection tools and the Pen tools and all the other types of illustration options to really help us be creative. Okay, but then we're going to get into more complex things, right? That's also going to help you do things a lot more efficiently, like working with symbols and graphic styles, the appearance panels, and then all the other transformation options like rotate and skew and all this other good stuff. But we're also going to get into text, right? Text is going to be very, very important. Even though this is illustration, we want to learn how we can actually work with some of our typographical options. And then we're going to get into exporting, right? How do we actually export all of these things to kind of make it our own? But there's so much more than that. But also understand that there's going to be a ton of exercise files for you to work with. We also have quiz questions all throughout. So definitely check those out to test out your knowledge. All right, so look forward to seeing the first lesson and thanks for watching. In this first lesson, let's talk about the difference between vector images and bitmap images. By definition, Illustrator is a vector creation tool. Now, what is a vector? Well, technically speaking, it is a mathematical formula that helps you create certain types of images that are lossless, meaning if I were to expand this object, which is a vector, and make it larger and larger and larger, it would have no degradation whatsoever to it. And if I were to zoom into this, you'd see that you can see how it still has clean lines. And you can see if I were to make this bigger and bigger and bigger, you can see that there's no loss to it whatsoever. And these lines remain clean just like that. The other factor is that if I were to go over to here to my direct selection tool, which we're going to learn all about in just a minute, and I click on here, you're going to see that this has a vector or path point that allows me to now expand this out and make different shapes out of it. And you'll also notice that I have this little, what's called the Bezier handle to then make some different changes to it, just the same. Now, its counterpart is something called a bitmap image or a raster image. And these are made of pixels. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just zoom in really, really close here. And you're gonna see as I zoom in, I have these little squares that come up. These are known as pixels or picture elements. Now, Every image is made up of millions and millions of these, but they are finite. So if I were to expand out this image and let's say put it onto a billboard, if it doesn't have high enough resolution, then you're going to see that there is degradation to the image as opposed to how vectors are. Okay, so I just want to get that out of the way just so we understand what we're working with here. Images are going to be bitmap images and vectors are going to be vector where we have these clean lines here and those are going to be essentially infinite because of that mathematical formula that recreates the image over and over and over again whereas a rastered image or a bitmap image is going to be finite and it's going to be limited if you're planning on expanding it out. Now, a bitmap image does not have Bezier handles or vector points or anything. I still have the ability to make this bigger if I wanted to and doing all that, but ultimately the image would degrade if I made it too big. All right, so just putting that out of the way, just understanding what our differences are between a vector and a bitmap and understanding that Illustrator by definition is a vector image creation tool. Okay, so understanding that, that's going to set us up nicely for the remainder of our lessons. And most of what we're going to be doing is creating 
vector images using some tools like the pen tool and some of these other tools over here on our toolbar, which we're going to explore more and more throughout this class. All right, so stay tuned and we'll see you in the next lesson. Our first lesson in Illustrator is going to be understanding and personalizing the workspace. So your workspace is made up of several different panels. Now many of these panels will show right when you first start. Some of them you have to bring in and some of them you're not going to want. So we're going to learn how to not only bring up some of those panels but also learn how to customize it so you can have what you need when you need it. So the first thing we're going to do is come way, way, way over here and you're going to see this little box icon right up there and you're going to click on that and then you're going to see that there's a number of different preset workspaces. And what I want you to do is simply click on Essentials and then click on Reset Essentials. If you do that, then we're going to be on the same page starting off. Now some of you may have already been tinkering with Illustrator, so you could have been kind of messing around a little bit with some of your panels and some of your workspaces. By clicking on reset, it's going to ensure that we're starting off at the same place. Now from here, what I want you to do is go way over here and you're going to see this tiny, tiny little double arrow. Click on that and then immediately come down below to these three dots where it says edit toolbar and then go over here to like it looks like a little bulleted list and choose advanced. Even though this is a beginner's class, what this is going to allow us to do is have access to all the tools that are actually hidden. Now at some point in the future, maybe you want to customize it and you want to take in some of the tools that are available to you, but for right now, we're going to use what the advanced tools option allows us to do, and now we're going to see we have everything available to us. Okay? So that's going to be the first thing we want to do. The next thing we're going to do is go over to here to the window menu, and we're going to bring in some of the essential types of tools and panels that we need. Namely, we're going to bring in the control panel, and you're going to see that now appears up on the top. That's fantastic. I'm going to click on Window, and I'm going to bring up my Layers panel, which is great. And you see, oh, guess what? It's already there. Well, you know what? I don't want it to be over here on the right-hand side. I'd like it to be kind of like docked over here so I have easy access to it. So your panels are broken up into potentially different sections. Here's my left section, the top section. I have my far right section over here. And then I have this little guy right there. So very easily, I can click and drag this and then dock it right there until I see a little blue halo. And now, bam, I have that. Now, anytime I want to see my layers, I can simply click on it. And then you can see I have my layers there. And I can click on this. And then I can go ahead and just dock it one more time. And then very easily come back to properties. Now, you may have noticed that libraries appears here. I do not want libraries. So what can I do? I can right click on where it says libraries and simply choose close. And it's gone. Well, guess what? If I decided that I want to have that back, I can go back to Window, and you can see how everything is in alphabetical order, and I can very easily bring libraries back. But I'm not going to do that right now. But let's go ahead and bring up a few other ones. I want to bring up my Appearance panel. Absolutely, you can see that shows up right there, and I'm going to dock that, wait for my blue halo, and that's going to be sitting there. What else might I want? Well, you know what? Color is a good thing to have. Love that. And you know what? I'm going to bring that over here. So notice a different type of blue halo that's a lot bigger. Fantastic. I don't need the color guide. Right click, choose close, and then it's just going to be color. And now let's just do a few more. I'm going to bring up my gradients. And one thing I want you to notice is that another tool that you can do when you are working with these panels is you can minimize them as well. So maybe I want this here, but I don't want it taking up so much room. I can double click on it and that minimizes it. I double click on it again and it minimizes it even more. I double click on it again and it comes right back. Now you will also notice that many of your panels have a little what we call the panel menu or a little hamburger right over there. And if I click on that, that's going to give me potentially more options that I want to see or fewer options. Totally up to you. Okay, that's great. So I'm going to just drag this over here and then dock that. So that's going to be sandwiched right there with all the other ones that are eventually going to be there. And let's just bring up some more options here. Let's bring up my stroke panel. And I'm just going to drag that into here. 
and let's come way down to the bottom once again let's bring up swatches absolutely swatches is great and this one happens to come with a whole bunch of other ones that I may or may not want so you can see here is brushes no don't need that right now click on close symbols definitely for a future lesson but not right now so let's go ahead and close that out and I would like to have my swatches and my colors combined just like that so now you can see how I can start building off of these and then just toggling all throughout very easily and very simply. Now, we're at the place where I might want to save this because I love what I've done here and I want to be able to come back to this anytime. So just like how I have my essentials panel that's already been created, I might want to save this as my own workspace. So therefore I can come back to it anytime I want in case things start to get a little bit crazy and invariably they will. So let's go ahead now click on this icon and come way down to the bottom where it says new workspace. And I'm just going to simply give this a name. I'm going to call this Dave's Faves. And now I'm going to click on OK. And now when I click over here, you're going to see now instead of essentials, it's Dave's Faves. Well, let's just see how this is going to benefit me. Let's just say I bring up another panel, right? And I'm just going to bring up, let's just say my links. Okay, that's there. Okay, fantastic. And you know what? I'd like to bring up another thing too. How about my history? That'd be really nice to have that there. And then maybe graphic styles you might want to work with at some point. Let's bring that up. Okay, great. And let's also say that, well, it could be that my properties panel is way over here and things just start to get really messy and really crazy. Okay, absolutely going to happen for you because things are not just going to be static in terms of your workspace. You're going to decide with a bigger screen, a smaller screen or different projects that you might want it to look a certain way. Well, I really want to come back to where it was when things were really nice and neat, nice and calm and nice and clean. Well, how do I do that? Well, I'm going to come back over to here and very simply, I'm going to choose reset. Dave's faves. I like to think about this as like the Mary Poppins effect, right? Where there's like a place for everything and everything in its place. So now when I choose that, everything goes right back to where it was just a few minutes ago where I have all of my stuff saved. Okay. So now that's really great for me to be able to do that. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add on something that I really do want. So I'm going to say graphic styles and I love that. That's great. And now I have a new thing here that was not there before. Well, what about Dave's Faves? Well, this happens to be a candidate to be part of Dave's Faves Club. So what am I going to do now is I'm going to go back here. I'm going to say New Workspace. And now what am I going to do? Well, there is no save. There's no overriding or anything like that. I actually have to type it out again. I know it seems kind of weird, and it tells me right away the name already exists. Clicking OK will overwrite. I say OK, and now Dave's Faves is still Dave's Faves, but now it has a new one with graphic styles. So that is also going to be the situation where you're going to continue to add on more content. So therefore, you're going to want to keep the same name. Now, many people have different workspaces for different projects, okay? Because maybe it's more typographical. Maybe you're working on posters versus working on logos and things like that. So you might need different tools, okay? So just keeping that in mind that you can have more than one workspace and name more than one workspace, okay? So pause the video. If you're just watching along now, you can pause it and then you can just watch this again and then create your workspace how you want to. Try to do it in lockstep is how I'm doing it because that'll help us throughout the lesson. Okay, so pause, practice, and we'll see you soon in the next lesson. In this lesson, we're going to discuss Illustrator's artboards. Now you're gonna notice here I have what looks like pages, but each of these is what's known as artboards. Now artboards can be used for a number of different reasons, could be for organization purposes, you could be comparing different types of projects you're working on. Maybe you want to export individual artboards while keeping the other ones separate from each other. Lots of things you can do. All right, now what we're going to do first of all is bring up our artboard panel. So in the last lesson, we learned about how we can find all of our panels by going here to window and you're going to choose the artboard panel. Now I have three artboard panels, one called avocado, one called bottle and one called pepper. 
And you will notice that if I double click in this little gray area here, that allows me to zoom right in on that particular artboard. Double click right here next to bottle, double click right here on pepper. Now I'm gonna go back to the avocado by double clicking on it and just notice that if I double click on the words, I can then call it something else, right? I'll call it avocado exclamation points. I love avocados, great. So understand the distinction between double clicking on the word and double clicking on the space to the right of it. Fantastic. Now I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out a little bit and I'm gonna do that by doing control minus on my keyboard. And then I'm gonna hold down the space bar and click and drag to the right. Now, why am I doing this? Because I'd like to add on another artboard because potentially I'd like to bring in some more content. Now using my artboard panel, I can very simply click on this little plus sign. And now when I zoom out, I'll be able to see, wonderful, there is another artboard. And then notice how that artboard does not have a name. So I'll go ahead and double click on it. All right, and this one will be a cucumber. Great, so I hit the enter key and now I have another artboard available to myself. Now, what I want you to do next is go over here to our little side panel. Notice how we have all these options here. And you're gonna see that way on the bottom is something called my artboard tool. So when I click on that, notice how everything sort of lightens up a little bit, giving me some more options for each individual artboard. See that this is telling me the name of it. I can simply click on it. It's gonna go ahead and get this out of the way. And I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that this is still chosen. I can click on this and click on this. Now, why am I showing you this? Because you may want to organize your artboards in such a way. Well, let me go ahead and bring cucumber way down here. Let me go ahead and bring pepper way down here. So you see that? So now I might want to control how I'm bringing in and organizing all of my artboards because that's how I'm maybe showing it to a client. Maybe this is how my screen reflects it better, all right? Really, really up to you. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and get out of this. I'm gonna go right back to my regular tool over here. That's my selection tool. And then just notice that I have something called the properties panel over here. And then within my properties panel, I have this option to edit the artboards. So when I click on that, that's essentially gonna take me to the same place as I was when I clicked on this tool as well. Okay, so just keeping that in mind. Now we are gonna be working with a lot of the artboards and a lot of the different tools all throughout. So I just wanna get this out of the way. Now, one thing you may be doing at some point is you might be exporting your files and you only want to export one particular part of this. So what I can do is go over to here to file and then export. And I want you to notice here is this export for screens. And then it's going to ask me, well, what would you like to do? Do you want to export just one particular artboard or all of the artboards? See that? So if I really only wanted to work with exporting this avocado, I can very easily just export the avocado as in a different particular location and as a different particular file type, etc. And you can see here it says export artboards. Okay, I'm not gonna do that right now. We'll do that later on, but I just wanted to get it out of the way so we understand how Illustrator wants you to work. Okay, so that's a good little primer on artboards. Practice that, get familiar with the tools here on the left-hand side and the properties panel over here on the right-hand side. We're gonna be getting a lot deeper into all these tools at some point, but I really just wanna kinda of skip to some of these really important tools right off the bat before we get into all the nitty gritty of everything in our properties panel and everything inside of our tools panel. All right, practice that and we'll see you in the next lesson. In this lesson, we are going to talk about how to create new documents. So just like a lot of other programs out there, if you go over here to the file menu and you choose new, that's going to set you off with creating a new document. You'll also notice that there is a keyboard shortcut of control N. If you're going to be on a Mac, it's going to be command N. So I'm just going to click on that and you will see it takes me to this dialog box. Now, if we look on top, you're going to see that there are some tabs like a recent tab, saved tab, and we have these other presets depending on what type of output or medium you're going to be working with. So you'll see here if I'm gonna be creating, let's just say an app, or I want to have something that's gonna be on a mobile device, they're going to give me a whole bunch of presets for certain phones or tablets, etc. And you'll also notice the unit of measure shows as pixels. Go over here to web, 
And this is going to be more for websites. And you can see here it says web large, web minimum, etc. And you can see also this is in pixels. And let's go over here to print. And you're going to see that for this one, this is going to be in points. Okay? Film and video, something different. And one thing to notice also is that Adobe gives you a ton of free templates to work with. So let's just say, for example, you are creating something for a website, some kind of mock-up, and you'll see that there's a whole bunch of different presets all ready for you to work with. Okay, so you can see if I simply click on that, it's going to give me a little bit of an overview of what it is. It's going to show me the size of it, how many pages, things like that and all for you to work with. And just notice here it says free. Most of these will be free, really great. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back over to where it says recent. And then on the right hand side, what we're going to do is create our own documents. So you'll see here, there's a unit of measure of everything you can choose from. Let's just go ahead, go to inches. I assume we're all on the same page with that. And I'm just going to make it be, let's just say five by five inches. All right, but let's say, for example, I wanted to make that so it's going to be wider than it is tall. So let's go ahead and make that seven. And you'll see that the orientation now changes. So the orientation is going to either be portrait or it's going to be landscape. So if I wanted to switch that, notice I can very, very easily switch that. Now, earlier we did talk about artboards. So right here in the process of you creating a new document, you can then add on new artboards. So I'm gonna go ahead now and choose three artboards, make it so when I create this document, it's going to have three artboards already set up. Below, you have the option for a bleed. So if you want something to have no bleed at all, what you would do is you'd make this go up to 0.125. So therefore, when you print it out, it's gonna come way off to the edge and you will not see any empty space as a result. Now, having zero bleed, you probably think that that's gonna be okay, but sometimes printers don't pick up on it. So you wanna to try to go all the way up to this number here if possible. The other thing you're going to see is the color mode. Now you'll see that the color mode could be RGB. If you are working with web or you're working with screen, click on that, you also have the option for CMYK. And that's gonna be better when you're printing. So RGB is red, green, blue color profile. CMYK for printing is cyan, magenta, yellow, and the K stands for black. And then down here for your raster effects. Earlier we talked about raster versus vector. Now notice the PPI, that's going to be pixels or points per inch, All right? So depending on the size and the resolution of what you wanna work with, you would then choose this. So if I know that I wanna have just really high resolution, it's gonna be high quality, printing in a magazine, printing in a billboard, I would wanna choose this. All right, now you will also notice that down below, you can click on more settings and a little dialog box will pop up. And then from here, you can customize some of the things that we've already seen here, but then you might want to go a little bit further if you're feeling a little bit more advanced. But for right now, I'm just gonna leave it as is. I'm gonna cancel this, and then I'm just going to simply click on Create. And now I have my three artboards, all three of them the same exact size. Okay, now I'm pretty happy with that. And again, remembering that I could go to my artboard tool right here, and I can bring out my artboard panel, I can customize the name of my artboards, I can move these around very easily as well. The other thing some of you may have noticed is the fact that I have this little red line all around there. That is coming off the outside of the artboard because that is indicating to me my bleed. So remember my bleed was larger than zero, so it's coming a little bit off the artboard just in case you wanna overprint or the printer overprints. Now, just understand that you don't wanna put anything important on this part here because it may not print in fact, okay? That's designed to not print. So just keeping that in mind. All right, so just get this out of the way so we're all set for when we're creating new documents. One of the most common tools that you'll be using is the selection tool. So if we look over here in the upper left of our toolbar, we're gonna to see this black arrow. Now the selection tool allows you to not only select objects, but also resize objects and rotate objects, and also give you information about the objects. So as an example, if I were to click on this, I select it, and you'll see I get this little bounding box around it. 
Now, if I go over here to the corners, you'll notice I can go ahead and click and drag, and I can resize it. If I come outside of the corner, you'll notice here I get this little kind of button hook, and it's going to allow me to rotate. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to this arrow, do the same thing, come to the corner, and just simply click and drag. Now, a nice little tip is if I hold down the shift key as I do that, it's going to lock into place every 45 degrees. So I know I want to do a perfect arrow facing left, I can hold down the shift key, and it will lock into place for that rotation. Now, you'll also notice that when I select it, I will also have a whole bunch of options over here in my properties panel. We're going to be spending a lot of time in the properties panel in this course. But the thing to understand about the properties panel is that it's context based. So if I were to select on this object, you'll notice I'm going to get a whole bunch of options to know about that, the properties of that particular file. And if I go over to here to my text, now if I select on the heart, you'll notice that when I click on it, it shows me the fill color. That's fantastic. And you'll also see that I can see the fill color here and the fill color there. Let's click on my star. You'll notice that the fill color now changes to reflect that color yellow. So you have to select it to affect it. So just understand that that is what the selection tool does. Now many times you will have an opportunity to double click on an object. So for example, if I were to double click on the star, you're going to see this takes me into what's called isolation mode. Certain objects require you to double click on them using the selection tool to be able to drill down and see that this object may be a group, it might be a compound path, it might even be some text if you double click on it, you'll be able to edit it. I'm going to go ahead and click on this little back button to get me out of isolation mode. The other thing to understand is that certain things may not be clickable when you try to click on them. As an example, let's go over to here to our layers panel, which we brought up in an earlier exercise. And I want you to notice that I have two layers. And we're going to go all into layers in just a little bit. But I just want you to notice this first thing here is that this has a little lock icon. And then notice it's BG for background. And if I were to open this up, you'll be able to see that there's a whole bunch of stuff in there. So as an example, this background I cannot click on because it is locked. So if I unlock it and then I click on it, you'll notice now I can click on this and I can go ahead and move this text around if I want to, and I can even delete it if I wanted to. So I'm just going to click on edit and then undo, edit and then undo, and it comes right back. Or just notice the shortcut key of control or command Z to undo as well. All right, so just understand that using the selection tool, I can select something and then affect it in terms of moving it, in terms of rotating it, resizing it. And if something is not selectable, it might mean the fact that it's locked. So just keep that in mind. Now in a little bit, we're gonna talk about its counterpart, the direct selection tool. But I just want to first make the distinction about what this tool does. And it's a very basic tool, very helpful tool. And it works well with the Properties panel as well as the Layers panel. So practice that briefly, and we'll see you in the next lesson. In the last lesson, we discussed the Regular Selection tool. And that allows us to select an entire object, move it around, and rotate it and resize it. Now, in this lesson, we're going to talk about the direct selection tool. And it tells you here, select and adjust anchor points and segments to reshape paths. So when you create shapes, when you are drawing out vector graphics, they are known as paths. And there are all kinds of different points throughout that allow you to manipulate it called anchor points. So let's just choose our direct selection tool. And then I'm going to select my object. I want you to notice that all throughout this object are these little blue dots. These little blue dots are our anchor points. And easily, I can then manipulate them. So if I simply click there, I want you to notice how that gets activated. And I have these little handles that appear. These are known as our Bezier handles. They are named after the person who invented this. So I'm just going to click on this middle one right there. And then just simply click and drag to then move it in a variety of different ways. Let me go ahead and click on this one. And this time, instead of clicking and dragging, I'm going to use my arrow keys on my keyboard to just give it a little nudge up. And I'll go ahead and do this one. And I'm going to select it. Notice it's now solid blue where the other ones are hollow. That's Illustrator's way of telling me that it has, in fact, been selected. And this time, I'm going to go left. And just notice it's going one pixel at a time. 
But this time I'm going to hold down the shift key with my arrows and then it goes 10 pixels at a time. So this is going to allow me to have all kinds of different creative control over my illustrations. This time let's go ahead and click on this one. Then notice how this is now solid where the rest, let me click away. Notice how now this one is solid and now I can click and drag on this and have a very different shape very quickly. So let's come back to here. Different shape, but still a shape nonetheless. Using my direct selection tool, I'm going to click on this guy. So now notice how this is all made up of anchor points. So if I wanted to be a little bit more creative with this, I could simply click on that one anchor point. And again, noticing how this is a solid blue where all the rest are hollow. And I can very easily click and drag on it. Now Illustrator is giving me a little bit of feedback that my mouse is right on top of it as I do that because it can be very easy to miss it in case you know you try to click on it and you're not understanding why it's not working. So you'll notice that as I mouse over it, I'm getting a tiny little square right beneath my arrow to tell me that I'm right on it. Notice I'm not. Now I am. So I simply click and drag and bam, there I am. Now, some of these are going to have the option to adjust what's known as the curve. Okay, so let's go ahead and just take a look. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm just going to do control or command minus and holding down my space bar. I'm clicking and dragging and I'm just going to simply click on this and then now select this. This is a curve. As a result of being a curve, I get the Bezier handle that I can now click and drag to then adjust that curve. I can go up and down. I can also go to the right to make it wider. And I can also go to the left to make it more narrow. Do you see that? How it's changing the slope of the curve. So I just want to make it a little bit more bulbous. I can do that. Let's do the same thing on this side. Okay, I'll do that. Click and drag. And I just want you to see here, that's now going to be a very different shape as a result, giving me full control over how I want to work with that shape. When you are working with non-curves, or you're working with these little corners, you are not going to get those little bezier handles. Okay, This one has a half bezier because it curves into this one, but down below it does not, so there's only half a bezier. So just understanding that. Clicking on this, no bezier. I click and drag on that, and then I can very easily move it around. One thing you will notice, though, is that for some of these, particularly the corners, you are going to see things like this. Okay, This is going to give us the option to convert it from a hard corner into a curve. So if I move my mouse on top of it, you're going to see Illustrator is communicating to me with that little sort of curved icon. Now watch what happens when I click and drag on that. I can now change that shape. So it's now gone from being a corner into a curve, and both of these now should have little bezier handles associated with them, and then I can even adjust it if I wanted to, going in whatever different direction. Okay, so really a lot, a lot of control to work with these. Later on, we're going to learn how to create some of these things from scratch. You're going to learn how to use the pen tool, and the pen tool and the direct selection tool work nicely with each other because one is going to allow you to create it and the other one is going to allow you to manipulate it. So the direct selection tool allows us to select what already exists and then reframe and redirect and modify those shapes. All right, so one of the more common tools that you'll be using, especially if you're going to be doing illustration. We're going to continue our lesson on selection tools by discussing the lasso tool. So notice you move your mouse over it, gives you a nice little preview of what it is, and you'll also notice that the shortcut key is a Q. So a little sense of humor and creativity from the folks of Adobe, because if you look at the lasso icon itself, it looks like a Q. So easy way to remember that. Now the lasso tool works the way that you might expect it to, where you sort of just drag around the content that you'd like to select. Now I'm going to bring up my layers panel just so we can see what our layers look like here. And just notice here I have my background layer and I have my objects, and I have a whole bunch of individual objects within this layer. 
Now, if I lock it right now, I can just simply click on that. And you'll notice I'm locking all of my background objects, including the color of the background and all these individual letters that are here. I'm doing that on purpose because when I select something, I want to make sure that I don't accidentally select something else. We're going to go into layers a little bit deeper later on. But let me just show you here how it works. I'm just going to simply just click and drag over the top of this star. And you'll notice that I now get all these little anchor points highlighted and some of them not highlighted. Okay, so you'll notice here that these are dark blue and these are white. So if I just start, for example, use my arrow keys and kind of bump this up, you'll notice that only the ones that are dark blue now get affected by me tapping on the arrow keys. Okay, so that's really nice because it allows me to then just select little bits there without having to really zoom in and using the direct selection tool. So you can see that's a nice alternative. I'm going to go ahead and click back on the regular selection tool and just kind of click away. And this time I'm going to use my lasso tool to just select kind of a whole bunch here. So I'm just going to go ahead and click and drag all around. You can see how that selects all of my anchor points. Really nice, really easy to do. Okay, now let's just go ahead and take a look at some other options for you here. So I'm gonna unlock this layer, and I just want you to notice that way down on the bottom, I have this one rectangle layer. And I'm gonna click on this little circle here just so you can see a nice little trick of how you can select individual objects within a layer. If they're not being selected themselves, you can click on this little circle, and that will just isolate that one layer so then it's selected, and you know you're not gonna get something else. And you'll also notice how I have this little red square there and then this circle has a circle around it just give me the indication that in fact it is selected now if nothing is selected there and i just wanted to just highlight let's just say the background there i can just simply click on this and just notice how i've just kind of touched it and the whole thing gets selected there okay and you'll notice even i have my little anchor points there and if i wanted to then i could go ahead and go back to my direct selection tool which is the a key or just simply click on it and then click on the little anchor point there all right. Now, each of these letters is also its own individual object, okay? Because what we've done here is we've done something called outlining our text. And we're going to talk about that in a future lesson, but you may want to isolate individual letters here. And it might be a little more difficult to go and isolate them here in the layers panel. So I can use my lasso tool to do that. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to lock just my rectangle so I don't accidentally get too much selected here. And let's just say I want to have the YOU. I'm going to make sure that my lasso tool is selected. And then very simply, I'm just going to drag around it, make sure I'm going around it, not touching it. And then you'll notice how I get all of them selected here. Okay, so and even all the anchor points and everything. Now, if I, I'm going to go ahead and just deselect that. Now, if I have my lasso tool here and I just accidentally just kind of click like this and I'm just kind of lazy about it, notice I'm not getting the top part there. Notice they're hollow anchor points. Right, so you really want to just kind of pay attention to what you're selecting on when you're selecting it and just notice that the lasso tool is going to allow you to select objects and it's very much more about the anchor points that you're selecting rather than the whole object itself. All right, so practice that and we'll see you in the next lesson. In this lesson, we're going to discuss the magic wand tool. The magic wand tool allows us to have certain types of automatic selections. So for example, I have all of these colors blue here, and I like to select all of the objects that are blue on here. But it might be that I have this black stroke that I want to select, and I want to select all the objects that have a black stroke. So if you think about an illustration you may have, you may have that people are all wearing the same color uniform that you've drawn, and you want to change that color uniform from black to white, you can very easily do that by selecting all of those objects. So let's go over here to our magic wand tool, and you're going to see it's going to tell us what it's going to do. You can see the keyboard shortcut, everything like that, nice little graphic visualization of what it does. But let's go ahead and go a little bit deeper into this tool before I show you what it does by double clicking on it. Now this is a very important and very unique nuance to Illustrator that many of these icons, many of these tools have the ability to double click on them to see extra options available to you. Now I just double clicked on the icon and now this just appeared. Now when this appears it's going to ask us, well what are we going to affect essentially when we're doing our selection? Are we looking at just the fill color? Are we looking at just the stroke color, the stroke weight, opacity, blending mode, that type of thing? So for example, 
using the magic wand tool, now that it's activated, I'm going to simply click right here on this blue. And you'll notice that I click on one blue in every single one of these objects that has a fill color of blue will then get selected. Now you'll notice that there's also a tolerance level. Well, let's just say, for example, I have a slightly darker blue or a slightly lighter color blue. Depending on the tolerance I've chosen, it's going to select those. So the higher tolerance, the more sort of open it's going to be to say, hey, listen, you're kind of blue. I'll go and add that. If you lower that down, there's going to be less of a chance that you're going to get it selected. So depending on what you have that selected as, you have kind of different gradations of a blue, you might want to just adjust your tolerance. Now let's go ahead and go to my stroke color now. And I'm just going to just deselect here, just good practice. And I have my stroke color. And this time I'm going to choose all of the whites. So I go over to here, go to my magic wand tool, and I'm going to simply just click here. And you'll notice that I selected on the object. Now I didn't select directly on the stroke color, right? But you'll see that as a result, it actually just did the red and the white, the red and the white, it did all of those, but it didn't do the red and the black. It didn't do the blue and the white. Okay, so very important there. So I'm going to go ahead and deselect. Okay, but this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to deselect fill color. So therefore, only objects that have a certain stroke color will then get affected. So let's go ahead and now do the white again. I'm going to click on this. And now you'll notice that every single object that has a white stroke color now gets selected. Earlier, I had both of these selected. So therefore, it was like, okay, well, both of these things have to exist in order for that object to then be selected. Okay, so just keeping that in mind how that works. So let's go ahead and just try one more. I'm just going to go ahead now and just deselect this one here, go to my stroke weight, and you'll see now it says, okay, well, we have kind of a tolerance of five points. Okay, as opposed to this other unit of measure of tolerance, which is no points or pixels. It's just basically sort of a percentage. You're going to see here is a point. So I'm going to go ahead and just deselect now, come back to my magic wand tool. And let's just bring this down a little bit. And I'll just bring this down to, let's just say two. All right, very good. Now it's only about the stroke weight. And I only want ones that are going to have that level of stroke. So notice I'm only getting the ones that have a very thin stroke there. So they really are giving you a lot of choices to work with here in terms of our fill color, our stroke color, and our stroke weight. And if you are working with opacity, you might want to then select all objects that have a certain level of transparency or opacity around it. Okay, so know the option is there at this point. I'm just going to focus on this since this is really just the beginning of the class. But note that if you are going a little more advanced, you do have other options for opacity and blending mode as well, which we will not be discussing in this course. But certainly some of you may be a little bit more advanced, so you might want to explore that. Okay, but really, really awesome tool, very easy to use. But just to remind you again, the tricky part is going to be that first part of just double clicking on that. All right, so one more time, I'm just going to close this, come back to this, double click on it so you can see what your options are. All right, so pause the video, practice that, and we'll see you in the next lesson. In a previous lesson, we have discussed the selection tool. The selection tool has a lot of different purposes and applications, including selecting, rotating, resizing. So if I rotate from the outside here, you can see me doing that. I'll go ahead and resize, just coming out from here. I'm going to go ahead and undo that by just going over to edit, undo, edit, undo, and I'm back to that. Now, Illustrator has a whole series of other transformational tools that you may prefer at different times. So if we come over here to the left hand side where our tools are, you're going to see that I have the rotate tool. If I right click on that, couched in there is my reflect tool. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on this little icon right there, and I'm going to bring this out so I can see them both just like this. Now to the right of that, you're going to see I also have my scale tool and my shear tool. We're going to focus on these. We're not going to be talking about the reshape tool in this class, but I'm just going to go ahead and bring those out just the same and have them over here. Now let's go ahead and see what they do. Now with this selected, I'm going to go ahead now and just choose this tool, which is my rotate tool. Now with this tool selected, I don't actually have to select the object itself. Notice there's no bounding box per se, but if you'll notice here, there's a little crosshair right there. 
at any place on the canvas, I can then click and drag. Notice that it's a little bit weird at first because like, wait, I can't see anything, I'm not grabbing anything, but I can really be anywhere on the canvas and rotate it. Bring that back. You'll also notice that if I hold down the shift key, I'm also rotating it and locking it at 45 degrees, just like I did in a previous lesson. Pretty great. Now, you'll also notice, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in here a little bit, that I have this little, little, what we call a reference point or registration point, this little blue guy right there. I'm gonna go ahead and back out again. And what that's going to do is basically set kind of like the fulcrum of how that's going to rotate. So again, you'll notice that when I rotate it, it rotates right there in the center of that little fulcrum. Now, if I now go over here and I just simply click, notice that fulcrum now gets lodged over here in the upper right. And now when I rotate, you'll see it's rotating around that fulcrum. So pretty neat. Now, a lot of us discover this kind of by accident, like we didn't mean to click. And then we say, well, what's going on here? Why is it doing it there? Well, now you know, because this little blue guy is now dictating where it's going to rotate around. So I'm gonna bring that right back, and then now it's right back in the center. Pretty cool, huh? Now, let's go a little bit deeper into this. So earlier we discussed the magic wand tool where I was able to double click on the magic wand tool, and I was able to see some extra options. Now, when I double click on this, you'll see I get my rotate options. So if you know exactly how you want it to rotate, you can absolutely do that. So if I know for sure I want this to rotate, let's just say 90 degrees, I can go ahead and do that. And then watch this, I'm gonna click on copy, and now it's done that. Beautiful, I'm gonna go ahead and undo one more time. This time I'm gonna go ahead and double click on it, and I'm gonna say 90, but this time I'm gonna say copy. And you'll see that now, in addition to having my initial copy, I now have this copy. So not only did I rotate, but I also made another copy of it. Just right from this dialog box, you see? Bam, I can go ahead and do that. Now let's choose, let's do 45 degrees and choose copy. And now come back to my selection tool. Now I have a whole series of planes. Click away and you can see what I have there. All right, so a lot of functionality there. Now, of course, I could have double clicked on this as well. So I'm going to just select this, double click on this icon, and I pretty much get the same options. Okay, so earlier I double clicked on this one, and then on this one, I double clicked. All right, same, same functionality, same outcome. So let's go ahead and explore some of these other ones. So with this one still selected, I'm going to now choose this guy here, which is my reflect tool. Reflection is gonna be really, really important for when you are drawing out objects. So sometimes you have just one half of an object. Let's say you're, you're drawing out a wine bottle or a face. The other side of that object that you've drawn is gonna be identical to the one that you've drawn on the left-hand side. You might just wanna reflect it. In this case, I just wanna reflect it, so we're just gonna have a little bit of a you know, different side to it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just double click on that. And you're gonna see, I have my horizontal option, just like that to reflect, or my vertical option. And notice it's giving me a preview. How is it giving me a preview? Because I have preview selected. So you can see here, if I wanna do that, and let's just say I wanna have them kinda of go, you know, nose to nose here, I have this as a horizontal reflect. And I'm not changing the angle. I'm gonna simply choose copy, and now, I'm just gonna use my shift key and my arrow keys just to kind of nudge those up there. And now, without having to do too much effort at all, I've now reflected them. Now let me just move these out of the way so you can really see it. Okay, so again, all I did was just double click on it to get there. So here I was with this selected, I double clicked. And then you can play around with if you wanna do a vertical reflection, horizontal reflection, and even potentially changing the angle when you do your reflection. But just remembering, that one option is to copy, and the other one is just to make a reflection of that object, but not making a copy. All right, let's go ahead and now cancel that, and let's just check out some of our other options here. I'll just choose this one, come back to my selection tool, choose this one, and now you'll see I have this one, which is just the scale tool. Scale just means size. So far we've seen how we can do that pretty nicely and easily with our regular selection tool, but let's see what kind of tricks we have using the scale tool icon here. So when I click on that, you'll notice how my little bounding box goes away. And very similar how I saw with my rotation tool, I don't have to click on any little bounding box or anything like that. I can just go ahead and move my mouse to the outside and you'll see how it's now growing. 
okay, and I can go this way, this way, etc. Now you will notice once again that I have this little blue little crosshair reference point right there that's telling me where it is in fact scaling from. So if I want to scale, let's just say from right there, I'm going to get a very different experience. So now I'm going to go back to this tool if it's not highlighted already, and you'll see now it's kind of just leaning on that part right there. It doesn't come from the center. So sometimes you really want it to sort of like have a base on one little part, and that's the, where this base is, and then it will then scale or grow right from there, or potentially even sink right from here as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and double click this time, and we'll see what other options we have here, and you'll see here non-uniform or uniform. Well, some of you have made notice that when I was resizing it, it wasn't resizing and constraining the proportions at the same time. So this time I'm gonna say uniform. All right, let's go ahead and just click OK. And now let's just see what it does there. See, I can now make it scale out by going out this way. OK, great. Now it's uniform. I love that. And now let's go ahead and see what our options are within the dialog box. So I'm going to double click on this and I'm going to go back to uniform. And this is going to give me more choices. So I'd like to make this maybe about one and a half the times bigger. So I'm going to just do 150. And you can see there it is. And it constrains the proportions. Now, going a little further, you do have these options here in terms of scaling the corners and scaling the strokes and effects. In future classes, we are going to be talking about strokes and effects and also for our corners. When you see that the object is not scaling to proportion the way that you like to see it scale, you may want to tell it, hey, you know what, Illustrator, you need to also scale the corners because if you have decided that the corner radius is a certain number and it's not scaling them according to what the new size is, you may want to make these changes. All right, so just remembering that you have these options here. Same with strokes. If you decide that your stroke or your outline is, let's say, five points, but you also want it to grow as the object grows to make it be actually 50 points, you'd want to make this choice here. Okay? Or if you don't want it to, if you want it to remain thin, you can uncheck this. All right. Now, of course, I have this option to copy as well. So now when I click away, you will see that I have my original and I have my new one because I've now made a copy of this. All right, I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And now let's go over here to our next one, which is going to be our shear. So if you'll see here, I have my shear tool. And then just like that, let's make sure that this is first selected. And now, just like how I had with my other object, I'm going to see here I have my little crosshair, my little registration point. And this is what shear is going to allow us to do. Maybe you want to shear this way. You're going to kind of give it the, the effect that it's sort of bent a little bit. You can see how, okay, I want it to be a little bit different than the rest of these. Maybe it's in the middle of turning. Maybe it's a different angle of sorts. You can absolutely do that. Okay, let's go ahead now and double click back on this and let's see what our options are here. Just knowing that I have other ways of adjusting this. So you'll see there's this little dial here. If I wanted to do it a little more manually and get a little preview of it, you can see I can do that. It's kind of neat, you can do it that way. And just notice how the numbers over here on the right hand side change. I'm giving a nice little preview. Now, if you want to get kind of a real-time preview, if you click inside of this box where the degrees are, notice my cursor is in there. I'm going to use my little mouse wheel to then just incrementally resize it. See that? Okay, pretty neat. And you can see I'm seeing it in real time. I know exactly what I'm going to get as I'm getting it. When I click and drag on this, I have to wait to release the mouse to see it. All right, so okay, cool. Now that's the effect that I'm getting. All right, now we can check out some of these options here, kind of subtle options, but let's come over here to our angle of our axis and pretty much do the same thing. If it's a little bit too much of a hard angle, you can adjust that, bring that up, bring that down, and you can see what choices you're gonna get. You have all the control in the world, all right? And then with these guys, slight different ones, you can see how it's going a little bit on the horizontal versus the vertical axis. All right, as you can see how it's all kind of rotating according to what's here in the center. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and click OK, and just reminding you of depending on where you have your registration point, if you have it up here, your outcome is gonna be significantly different. Okay, so just keeping that in mind.
All right, so it's a lesser used tool, this shear tool, but it's good back pocket tool in case it comes up where you really need to make manipulations to your objects. All right, so definitely going next level with what we can do with our selection tool. So practice it, get comfortable with it, and we'll see you in the next lesson. In this lesson, we are going to discuss how to draw shapes. Shapes are essentially the building blocks of so many things that you will illustrate in Illustrator. So we can start off with squares, circles, we can do polygons, we can do all kinds of different shapes. But remember, once you draw out a shape, you can then manipulate it to make other kinds of shapes out of those shapes. So even though we're going to start off with basic shapes, it doesn't mean that you can't do more complex shapes once you begin those basic shapes. So let's go ahead and see how we can draw out some shapes. So you'll notice over here I have on the left hand side, I have this option for a rectangle. If you right click on it, you're going to see a little flyout menu appears. We can do rectangle, rounded rectangle, ellipse, and so on. Now I can also use my little flyout menu to make this pop right out. And then this is going to be floating here anytime I want to use it. I can certainly collapse it, make it go this direction, or I can go collapse it this direction, or I can close it out and do that way as well. Let's go ahead and right click again and come out and I'm going to have this expand out and just kind of have that sit there. Now I'm just going to just draw out initially my just perfect square. So I'm going to click on this. And the first thing I want to think about is, well, what color do I want that square to be? Because currently I have no color at all as my fill. And I'm going to have this dark gray color as my stroke. And you'll also notice up here that the stroke will then come in at seven points. Now I want to change all of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click here on my foreground fill color. And I'm just going to go ahead and just choose any old color if I want to. You can go ahead and put in your RGB and your CMYK if you know what that is. And just very simply, I'm going to click OK. And now I have the color here. And you can also see it up there. That's ready to go. All right, now let's see what we can do to draw out our perfect square. Now you'll see here I have this little diagram for us to work with. I'm just going to click and drag while holding down the shift key and just draw it out. Now why did I hold down the shift key? Now I want to constrain the proportions, right? That's why you do the shift key. So now you can see here perfectly I have got a square. Now keep in mind now that shapes are vector graphics. And later on, we're going to talk more about vector graphics. We've already talked a little bit about it. But when you're working with vector graphics, we have these little anchor points that come out that I can use my direct selection tool to then select and manipulate. Okay, but if I want to just resize this very quickly and easily, I can go to my regular selection tool and then just simply click and drag that in. All right, I can make it taller if I want to, just like that. You can manipulate just the way that you work with any other object. So very simple, very cool. OK, so now I'm going to go ahead and just select it. And then if I wanted to now change the color of this, very easy to do that. I can go over to here, double click. It's still selected. And I'm going to go over here to blue. Fantastic. And now that will turn blue. Now let's say I wanted to change the stroke. Well, let's go over to here. And I'm going to change this to a much thicker stroke width. And you can see, bam, I have that. And let's go ahead and resize that, bring this in. And you can see beautifully, I have this nice square. OK, let's go ahead and draw out a few more. I'm going to delete this now. And this time, I'm going to draw out a circle. But this time, I'm going to draw a circle concentrically. I'm going to use some keyboard shortcut combinations to do that. So let's go ahead and choose my circle there. And that's nice. And let's go ahead and choose a different color this time. And I'll choose yellow. And this time, I do not want a stroke. So what I'll do is come over to here to my stroke color and then very simply choose this little slash right there. And that's telling me I'm going to have no stroke on that at all. I'm going to have a yellow fill. Now, notice here I have this little crosshair. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the Alt and Shift key at the same time. If you're on the Mac, it's going to be the Option and the Shift key. And I'm going to draw this out concentrically. You can see that. And you can see I can have a perfect circle coming in from the middle and also coming in from the middle to make it even a little bit bigger. And you can see I now have this perfect circle and it's coming in directly from that middle point because of those keyboard shortcuts. Now you can see here I've got this little note here to tell you exactly what to do in case you forget. All right, so that's really nice, very simple, very easy to do. Okay, now I'm gonna take a look at maybe one more. I'm gonna delete that and let's just do a rounded rectangle. And this time I'm not gonna hold down the shift key. I'm just gonna go ahead and click and drag just like that. 
And you can see here, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, you can see here I have a rounded corner radius in order for me to have rounded corners. That's essentially what we're talking about. When we have a corner radius, we have rounded corners. Now, if I wanted to make all of these now be a little bit more rounded, I can go back over to here to my direct selection tool and just simply click and drag on that and they all now become even more rounded, a higher corner radius. All right, now if we go to our properties panel, you're gonna see here that I'm gonna see all kinds of different options here. Now what you might not see that's hiding inside over here in my properties panel, inside of the transform part, is you can see that there's this a little ellipsis. When you click on that, it says more options, and now we'll be able to see all of my corner radius options that I now just created. So now if you keep your eye on that, as I click and drag this, right, one more time, bigger, keep an eye on that number, it disappears of course, and you can see now instead of that 26, now it's 12. All right, but of course, if I know exactly the one I want, I'm just gonna say 10, and then hit tab, and then bam, they all become 10 millimeters as far as my corner radius goes okay so lots of cool stuff that we can do there all right to have a little bit more visual interest maybe a little more of a contemporary look and feel i'm going to go ahead and get rid of that and now let's try a different shape this time we're going to do a polygon shape now polygon just basically means like anything that's not a circle and that's not a four-sided square so what I could do is I can draw out even a triangle if I wanted to, an octagon, you know, so all kinds of different shapes with multi-sides. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to simply just click and then just click anywhere. And you'll notice that as soon as I click anywhere, this comes up giving me the option for how many sides do I want. So I'm just going to go ahead and choose three. I click OK. And now just like that, I have a triangle and I can just come over to here and resize it. And now if I wanted to rotate this, I can then go back to my regular selection tool and then rotate it. And you can see here I get my little button hook and then maybe I'm gonna make like an arrow of some kind, just like that. That's how I'm gonna start off. That's pretty neat. And then that's how that's going to be, just like that. And then resize it this way. You kind of play with it until you're kind of, that's the beginning of my shape of sorts. But just notice how this also has the option for changing my corner radius. You see that there? And you can see there it is there as well. So just know that all of these corner corners have the option for corner radii manipulation if you like. All right, so let's go ahead and get rid of it this time. And let's go ahead now and do a different size. So let's choose a different color just for fun. I'll go ahead and choose this nice little violet color. Again, clicking one more time and I'm just gonna do six. Click OK, all right, and now that's the size that it is. Come over to here and just note that when I go back to my properties panel, I do have the option then to transform my width and my height. I have the option also to adjust the X and Y value where I want it to be located on the canvas. I also have the ability to put in more precise options like my rotation. So for example, I wanted to rotate that a little bit. Just notice how it rotated just like that. I also have options for flipping both vertically and horizontally if you want to. And then also, once again, let's go over here to our ellipsis and we can see here how we have different options for now increasing this number of sides, which is really, really cool. Okay, but it's really, really hidden. Okay, so let's just say I wanna make this into eight sides. Just like that, I can make that all over again without having to then recreate it from the beginning. So that's kind of neat. Let's keep going, keep going, keep going. Oh, wow, really cool. Now it is 18 sided. Okay, but let's go ahead and bring that back down to three, for example. Now I've created a triangle, okay? So really neat, but again, understanding that all these things are gonna be hidden. All right, so let's go ahead and just do one last one here. You can see how I can now make an equal triangle just by clicking on that, make all sides equal. Okay. Very good. Now let's do one last thing, something really fun. We're now gonna work on creating a star. So I'm gonna click on the star and then just simply click anywhere here. And you'll see how I get different options that now appear. Well, how many points do I want on the star? Well, let's just go up to 10. All right, and let's just see what we have here. Okay, we have this radius that's gonna be about nine millimeters and this radius is gonna be about 17. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And let's just see what that does for me. Go back to my regular selection tool, make this nice and big. Okay, 
That's pretty cool. And we can see what that does. Maybe you got the beginning of Lisa Simpson's haircut. All right, pretty cool. And that's how you're going to start that off. Right? So it could be a lot of different things. Maybe this is a frame of sorts. It doesn't necessarily have to be a star in the conventional sense. Let's go ahead now and do a very different kind of star. So I'm going to click on this, click one more time. And now this time, for my radius, I'm going to have a very small for my radius 1. I'll do 2 here. And then for this, I'm going to do 20. And then I'm going to make it be 20 points. Let's just see what that does. So now we can see we get a very, very different look. Okay, so now when I click and drag on the outside, I get a very interesting kind of star. All right, and I can even change the color, of course. Let's go ahead and make that kind of yellow-ish again. Click OK. And now you can see something very interesting now. Now that star actually kind of looks like a sun. A little bit more creative, a little more visual interest, a little more kind of dynamicism. All right, now let me show you just one last really cool little nuance, little trick you can do while you're drawing out any shape in case you wanted to increase or decrease the number of sides or points if you're talking about a star. So let's just go ahead, I'm gonna to go to my polygon. And if you recall, my polygon last time was six points, okay? But this time when I draw it out, I'm gonna click and drag, I'm just gonna just tap on my arrow keys, right? Going up and down. And you can see on the fly dynamically, I can now decide how many sides I want. Bam, so I can change it there as I'm drawing it. Pretty cool. All right, let's go ahead and get rid of that. Let's do it now with stars. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag and now I'm gonna go down. See that, not letting go of the mouse and I'm just going to tap on the arrow keys. Okay, just up and down, up and down. Let's go ahead and go crazy with this. Very neat, I let go, and now I've got a lot more points than I did when I started, and it's very easy to change that on the fly as you're drawing it out. Okay, so go ahead, pause the video, practice that, and we come back, we'll have some more tips and tricks on different types of things that you can draw. See you in a bit. In this lesson, we're going to continue our discussion on drawing out different types of shapes to kind of get us started with our illustrations. Now, we're going to go over to here to our little neighbor where you might see a little diagonal line. If you right click, you're going to see all kinds of other types of drawing tools, the line segment, arc, spiral, rectangular grid tool, and also the polar grid tool. So the line segment tool is quite simple. You simply just go ahead and select it. Make sure you choose what color you want for your stroke and also what width you want. So very simply, I'm gonna go ahead and just simply click and drag, and now I've got a line, and that line is six points. So I'm gonna go ahead and just increase that. Really, really nice. Now, if you wanna have a very straight line going across, all you do is hold down the shift key and now you've got a straight line and I can also go this direction. Notice I'm making a perfectly straight line and I'm good to go. Now, one thing to note about working with these is that if you are gonna create a line and you wanna resize it, you can very, very easily go over to here to your regular selection tool and then just resize it accordingly and go in whatever direction you want if you want to change the direction of it. Okay, that's great. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that one. I'm gonna choose this one, and then I want you to note something else. And we're gonna get in deeper into this, but you're gonna see here up on top, we have these different types of line options we can work with. Now, if you wanna have a line that's a little bit more interesting looking, you can click on this little drop down for your variable width, and I'm just gonna choose this one, for example. And you'll notice now it's no longer a very simple sort of symmetrical, very static line, you can see I have more like a calligraphic drawing, you know, that type of thing. And of course, I can change the color if I wanted to, I'll go over here to my swatches, and then very easily, that's changed. Now, this is going to come in handy when we start working with strokes of any kind or lines of any kind. So let's go ahead and continue our conversation, go ahead and delete these, and let's discuss how we can work with other things. I'm just going to do a very simple lesson on the arc tool. I'm just going to click on that and then just very simply click and drag. Now, a nice little modifier is if I tap on the arrow key going up or down, you can see here I have now adjusted what that arc is going to look like. All right, so also depending on where you're at, you also may say it's going to go that direction. Okay, that's great. You can see you can go to the other side. Now I'm going to stretch this out, and now just like that, I've got that shape, 
If that's the exact shape you need, you've got it. Let's go ahead and try a different one this time. I'm gonna go over to here and you can see very cool. I've got a very interesting different shape, but now using the arc tool. Fantastic. Let's go on with the conversation. Let's go over here to the spiral tool. And keeping in mind, I have a stroke of 20 as I'm about to draw this out. Let's bring this maybe down to 10. And then I'm just going to choose a very simple black one. Now, for this particular tool, I'm now going to just simply click and drag out from the middle here. And as I do that, I just want you to see all these little spirals that I get. But this time I'm gonna do another modifier with my arrow keys. And I want you to notice what's happening here. I'm getting my spiral to come in deeper as I go up on the arrow keys and I'm gonna have less spiral marks when I go on my down arrow. I'm gonna go ahead and make this kind of neat, look like a little kind of a snail and come out all the way to here. And I can even manipulate it by dragging my mouse around and around, depending on how you wanna show this. Come back around this way. And now I'm just gonna let go and now let's go ahead and bring this up, up, up. And let's change this variable width to this guy right there. And now you can see I have a cool little shape just like that. Let's bring this away from our graphic behind it. And you can see that's pretty cool, right? Nice little start there. And if you wanted to fill this, you can very easily fill it with a color as well. Let's go ahead and just choose this little orange color. And now you've got a very interesting shape and maybe you're starting off with just like some little snail or whatever it's gonna be. And again, taking a look at my variable width and what it does for the point, just like that. All right, let's go ahead and continue on. Let's just check out our rectangular grids. I'm gonna come down to here. And what we're gonna do here, I just want you to notice from my arrow keys, I've got it all listed here in case you wanted to increase the vertical lines, right? Meaning your columns or decrease them. And also the same for your rows, okay? So it's gonna be going across your horizontal lines. Well, let's go ahead and see what that's gonna look like in case you're wanting to draw out a rectangular grid. It could be really nice just for organizing your content. Maybe you're just using them as grids or you're using your content as like a table might. So you wanna actually control your content and segment it like you would a table. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna simply click and drag out just like this. And now I'm just gonna start tapping on the up arrow. Notice I get more rows. Tap on the down arrow, less rows. Tap on the right arrow, I get more columns. Tap on the left arrow, I get less columns. All right, so let's go ahead and finish up with that. And guess what? These are all strokes just the same, so I can make these thicker if I wanted to. And potentially you wanna do something maybe a little bit different with these and you have a again, different kind of visual interest, it kind of fades away, maybe it's a fence, maybe it's a tennis court, a uh, net or something like that. You're just trying to kind of create the illusion of reality. Those variable widths can be really helpful for you. But really neat to be able to just very easily create something like this without having to draw out a million squares, you can use your rectangular grid tool. Okay, now let's finally come down here and let's use our polar grid tool. Okay, so let's go ahead now and I'm gonna use very similar modifier keys to adjust the number of radial dividers and concentric circles as I did with my table. So let's just go ahead, I'm just gonna go ahead and click and drag out like this and watch this as I tap on the up arrow keys. You see, I get more of those. I go down, I get less of those, okay? And now I'm gonna go to my right arrows and notice how I get like more pieces of the pie. See that? So now I'm gonna let go. And now let's go ahead and click and drag on that. And you can see, all right, maybe that's the beginning of some type of plan that you're doing for you know, drawing out um, Burning Man kind of looks like this. If you've seen what the Burning Man maps looks like, maybe you're doing a festival, maybe you're just drawing out a spider web and you wanna be a little more kind of funky with this and be more creative after you've drawn this out. You can do that, but this is your start of how you might wanna do that. And again, let's go ahead and try a different type of variable width. Let's go ahead and just try that. Cool, all right, and if it was a little bit more thick, I'll be able to see it even more pronounced. You can see, very neat. And let's try a different color, go to here. And now you can see, very cool, very interesting graphic that you might be starting off with, okay? Again, this is all just starting points that you can then ultimately create something from these 
as we move forward, we're going to learn about expanding our appearances to then be able to manipulate each individual part of our graphics and all of these illustration tools that Illustrator gives us to start with. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video, practice this, and we'll see you in the next lesson. In this lesson, we're going to do a little bit of a deeper dive into working with anchor points, namely selecting our anchor points, editing our anchor points, even adding and removing anchor points to get more complex shapes. Now, currently, I have one shape selected, and that shape is selected using our regular selection tool. In order to see our options for our anchor points, we need to work with the direct selection tool. Okay, so you'll notice that as soon as I select that, I get a different set of options here on my shape. And you'll notice here I get all these different new shapes here around the outside instead of that regular bounding box. So if I click on this now you'll see I get these little white boxes. I go over to here to my direct selection tool and now they become these solid blue boxes. That is indicating to me that these are now anchor points. Now this is a little review from before so I'm just going to go ahead and just show you again. You simply click on one that becomes the isolated and active and selected anchor point and I can very easily move that in and out and do all kinds of different things to this to have a very different type of shape. Okay, so very cool. I can go ahead and do this one and I'll go ahead and select this particular anchor point. And because this is a curve, I get these little Bezier handles. Okay, again, a little bit of review for you here. Now, let's see what we can do in terms of manipulating these in potentially a different way. I want you to notice in the upper left now, I have this option to convert my anchor points. So if I wanted to convert this into, let's say, a corner anchor point, I can very easily do that with just one click. I'll go ahead and do the same thing here. Notice I isolated it. This has a dark blue selection now as opposed to these hollow white ones. And I'm going to simply click on that. And now, bam, we're on our way to do a very different kind of shape. And then maybe I'm going to be drawing out a leaf of some kind. Very cool. So now I can select this one. And now I'm just going to go ahead and just bring that in like so. Bring this in like so. And now I'm on my way to creating potentially different object. And it started off as a circle. All right, so on top, I have one anchor point that was converted from a curve into a corner and the same thing for the top. And then these guys, I just brought them in a little bit. Okay, so very cool, very easy to do. But now let's say I wanted to go a little bit more complex with my drawing. That's when I can then add on anchor points. So how do I do that? Well, if you go over to here to your pen tool and you right click, you're going to see I have all kinds of different options here. Just my regular pen tool. We're going to do a lesson on that in a little bit. And then we have this add anchor point and then delete anchor point. So I'm going to now just go ahead and fly that out. So it's just kind of floating there. OK, but I want you to also notice that these have some really great keyboard shortcuts like the plus sign and the minus sign. There's no command or control or anything. It's literally just the plus sign and also just the minus sign. See that? I'm just tapping the plus and minus on my keyboard and it just toggles right through it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add on an anchor point to this little leaf to maybe have a little bit more kind of texture to this leaf. All right. Now think about anchor points as kind of like joints, right? So if you look at your arm right now, you've got your wrist, you've got your elbow, you look at your leg, you've got your ankles and you've got your knees. And that allows for a little more sort of like bendability. Okay, your forearm in the middle does not have a joint, so it can't really bend. Okay, so we need to add on more kind of bendability and joints to the shape here. So imagine there's no knee right in this spot here, and I want to add on a knee. Or maybe you want to add on several types of things to kind of create a nice little kind of ripple effect here. We can very easily do that. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit and you're going to see that when I click here, I get this little plus sign. And now when I click anywhere, you can see right there on the line, I get a new anchor point. I'm just going to go ahead and click here and then I'm going to get another anchor point. I'm going to click here, get an anchor point. Okay, and then maybe I'll even come here and get yet another anchor point. Okay, so you'll see that when I select any of these, you see, I get a little anchor point right there and then another little anchor point right there, et cetera. Now this is gonna allow me to then kind of create a little bit more kind of texture to this. See that, I'm gonna go like kind of every other one, you know, kind of playing around with it to then have a little bit more 
ways of playing around with it, even with my Bezier handles. And then I'm just really creating kind of different texture around it. Now recall that I could even use my arrow keys on my keyboard to then just kind of nudge it a little bit here and there. Also recall that I can move around my anchor points if I wanted to, to have maybe a little more texture up there or bring it down or even bring it in just like that. Okay, so now I'm starting to get a little more of a kind of a leafy type of structure, right? A little bit more kind of organic. And you might want to play with that on this other side, just the same, very easily. I'm just going to tap on the plus sign this time and then just go ahead and click, click and just kind of go crazy with it, right? Just, it's very organic, very natural. Then I come back to my direct selection tool and then just start kind of moving it around. Get, get some kind of natural wavy stuff happening there. Okay, so this is going to give you a lot of control here. Okay, so again, don't forget that you also have the ability to play around with your Bezier handles to kind of adjust the sort of wavelength of how that's going to be. Cool, I love this. And then maybe this is going to be an ice cream cone. There's all kinds of different things we can do with this. All right, now let's say I added on a little bit too much of an anchor point here. Well, what I can do is very easily come back to my subtract or remove anchor point. And all I do is very simply click on the anchor point and it's gone. So let me go ahead and kind of just do the reverse now. See that? Very easily bringing it right back, bringing it right back. And there we are. Nice little straight line. So if you decide you want something, bam, apply it. And then if you decide you don't want it, you can very, very easily remove them. Okay. So very, very nice. All right, now if we go over to here to um, this object one more time, we can see that we can very, very easily manipulate any kind of shape that we have here. So I'll go back to my direct selection tool, click it, and you'll notice a whole bunch of anchor points here. And then very easily, I can then just click on this, move it in, very, very nice, very, very different shape. All of a sudden, without having to do too much at all, I can bring this down, so then it kind of connects. And then maybe I do this and I'm going to play around with my little Bezier handles. Great. And then you're kind of changing the angle for that. Okay, cool. Well, you know what? I wouldn't mind a little bit more kind of modification for this and for this one. So that's when you would add on an anchor point and you just simply click and then you have a new anchor point. Go back to your direct selection tool and then bam, there you are. Okay. Now let's talk about some nice little sort of pro tips as you're working on these tools to be able to very quickly and easily kind of navigate between your add anchor point tool and remove anchor point tool and your direct selection tool. So let's say for example, I'm going to add one on here. So I'm going to tap on the plus sign and then I click on it. There it is. But let's say I want to move it right away. Well, notice what I'm doing here. I'm holding down the control or command key on my keyboard to temporarily have access to that direct selection tool. Notice I didn't have to go anywhere. I'm holding down the control or command key and now I can very, very easily move this around temporarily. Okay, let's make it a little fatter this time. Great, and now I can come back to it, right? And then kind of get it right. Okay, go right on top of the anchor point, not on the Bezier handle. Great, but guess what? Then I'm right back to this again. Okay, let's add on one more. So now I'm back to my add anchor point tool. I hold down the command or control key and now bam, there I am. I don't like this to be pointy. So now I can very easily convert this to a smooth or a curved anchor point. Very cool. Let's go ahead and do the same thing. Select that, holding down the control key, and convert that. Very nice. Okay. Now I have, again, a very, very different shape. All right. In a little bit, we're going to learn how we can work with a smooth tool to kind of smooth some of these things out. But right now, we're just learning some of the nuances of how we can work with not only the direct selection tool, but the adding and removing anchor points, and now converting our anchor points. And then finally, using these tools to be able to select our anchor points without having to go back to the direct selection tool. Okay, so really a lot you can do. Pretty much anchor points are the cornerstone of all your illustrations. So it's important that we master this. Okay, so pause the video and we'll see you soon. In this lesson, we are going to discuss the pen tool. 
Now the pen tool can intimidate a lot of people, so we are going to make it simple and simplified for you. Really the pen tool is very simple when you break it down to its sort of core components of just clicking or clicking and dragging. It's really all you want to think about at this point. All right, we're thinking about that we're just drawing out individual anchor points and initially it's just going to be a bunch of corners. And eventually you may want to manipulate those corners using your direct selection tool, possibly adding on additional corners or anchor points with your add anchor point tool that we learned about in the last lesson. So let's just see what we can do here. We're just going to draw out just some basic shapes and maybe we even create something just using something very simple like our pen tool. So where does the pen tool live? It's going to live right inside here and you can see it has a nice little keyboard shortcut of P and I'm going to simply just choose that. Now we're just going to draw out some very simple lines. I don't really need any kind of fill. So what I'm going to do is just click on my little slash right there. And all I'm going to have now is just a very, very simple stroke. That's going to be one point. So now how do we use the pen tool? Just really think about it like you're just drawing out anchor points, but you're not clicking and dragging. You're just doing anchor points. So all I'm going to do is just simply click once I have an anchor point and I'm just moving my mouse here. I'm not clicking and dragging. It looks like I am, but I'm now I'm just going to go ahead and click again. And then watch this. I'm going to go ahead and click again. And now this time, let's kind of have some fun with this. Click, 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 and then go up to here, click, and then, oh, to the peak. Okay, great. Click, 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 and then finally click here. And now watch this. I'm going to hold down the shift key as I move my mouse across this way. Why am I holding down the shift key? Because I want to keep it in a nice straight line until I get to the beginning. And then you'll notice how when I close the loop, I now get this little circle to tell me that I'm now in fact done with that. And now this entire thing is one big object. And I've now just drawn out this little mountain range, right? So very simple. Now, because this is one big object, I can then put in the color of my choice. So I'm gonna come back over to here, double click it, and just do some Purple Mountains Majesty, click OK, and now the whole thing is now filled in. Okay, that's great. And you'll notice I do actually still have that stroke around there. I can very easily get rid of that if I want to. I'll come back over to here and I'll just type in zero. And now I have no stroke, but I use that stroke to initially create it very simply with the pen tool. Okay, so very, very cool. Now, Again, recall I can add on more sort of ridges to this mountain by going over to my add anchor point tool and let's just go ahead and do maybe one up here and then one up there. And now I go back to my direct selection tool and I'm just going to go ahead and click and drag down just like that and like that. And now you can see, very cool, I've now just created something kind of interesting. Maybe this is your logo. Maybe it's just going to be just something on a t-shirt, something like that with just some basic lines that we've drawn with our pen tool. Okay. Now this was relatively simple, relatively straightforward because with this particular pen tool, I was just using my corners. But if you ever want to work with curves, it's going to be a little bit different. And instead of now clicking and clicking and clicking, I'm going to click and drag and that's going to create some of those curves that we saw in our previous lesson. And it's also going to give us those Bezier handles that we saw in previous lessons. So what am I going to do now? I'm going to go back to my pen tool and I'm going to just say, listen, I don't need any kind of fill here. So you'll notice how I can come to here and also do my little slash. And I do want to have some kind of color. And just for fun, let's go ahead and just choose this nice little orange color. And now this time I'm going to click once just like that. And then when I get to here, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to click and drag just like that. I'm going to go maybe about halfway just like this. Come over to here and watch this. I'm going to just simply click and I'm going to come over to here. I'm going to click and drag I'm going to go about halfway. Bringing it in just like that. OK, great. I come over to here and I'm just going to simply click. And now notice I'm just coming over here. I'm holding on the shift key to get a straight line just like that and then I'm just going to go ahead and click again once I see that little circle 
and then bam, you'll see I have this nice little shape here. Maybe I'm drawing out two tunnels, right? Something like that, side by side, right? Whatever this, maybe this is going to be an aerial view of somebody looking down, something like that. You now, or you're just starting this off to be something else, okay? But what did I do here to make this happen? Notice when I clicked and I came up to here, I clicked and dragged. That gave me the curve, okay? When I came down to here, it was still already curved, but I clicked once to make this part just a hard angle. It's kind of like a little hybrid there, okay? So this part is curved and this part is not curved, giving birth to something else that is not going to be curved because this is now a corner until I come up to here and click and drag. Now I have the ability to then play around with these Bezier handles to then play around with it a little bit, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and click and drag out just like that. Okay, make that a little bit wider. Come over to here, make this also a little wider. Okay, very cool. All right, let's do the same thing on this side. Do that. See how easy that is? Just like that. Now we have all that kind of control for us to work with. Now, you know, just building out two airplane hangers, whatever it's gonna be. Let's go ahead and now just add in a little bit of color. So select your object, going back to my regular selection tool, and then let's go ahead and maybe just for fun to get a little bit of a taste of what we're gonna do in the future, maybe you wanna try out some of these little gradients, right, to get a little bit of a different feel, like something like that. Maybe even one of these patterns, right? Just see what's available here. You're just kind of playing around and then just seeing what we can do very, very easily that's outside of the ordinary of what we've already done with colors, okay? So that's essentially the pen tool. Now, if you have something that you're gonna be tracing, you would essentially be doing that type of thing. Like you'd be moving your mouse around, sometimes clicking, sometimes clicking and dragging, but don't worry about getting it perfect. What a lot of artists do is they just simply click, click, click with the corners, and then after the fact, they go in and they manipulate it. Okay, so you might come in here, and let's just imagine you had something else you wanted to kind of draw kind of wider. This is just a hard corner. Very easily, you could then convert this into something else, come over to here, make that a little bit wider, and now you're curving alongside of just like whatever it's gonna be, right? It's gonna be like an opera house, something like that. But it started off as just a very, very simple corner. So that's what I wanna at least have like the, the gist of this lesson is to not be intimidated by the pen tool and don't worry about getting it perfect. Because most people when you're drawing, you just have very, very simple corners and then that's kind of your skeleton. And then after the fact, you can either convert the style of the anchor point, meaning it's gonna be a corner to a curve or vice versa. And then of course, we can come in with our add anchor point tool and add on more stuff and just have a little bit more you know, flexibility, a little more nuance, and then just kind of continue on from there to have a very different shape entirely. Okay, so just playing around with all those individual anchor points, do what you wanna do, but you might have something underneath there that you are tracing and you can very, very easily go from there. But do not be intimidated by the pen tool. Seems a little bit difficult at first, but try those basics and then eventually all the other more complex shapes you wanna create will then come naturally. All right, pause the video, practice this, and I can assure you, you'll do great after a few tries. In this lesson, we're gonna learn about the curvature pen tool. Sort of a modification from working with the regular selection tool. And for some of you, this may be your pen tool of choice. So what we're gonna do is draw out this nice little cloud, which has a combination of curves and also corners all built into it. So you kind of get a two for one. So let me just kind of show you and also kind of narrate what we're gonna be doing as we do it to kind of draw this out. So very simply, I'm gonna come over here to my curvature tool. I choose that. And then what I'm gonna do is just simply click once here. And now I'm gonna to come to the center of this and click again and automatically it starts to curve. Do you see that? Not a whole lot happens there. It just knows it's supposed to curve based off of kind of where I'm placing the mouse. 
Okay. Now, when I'm going to get to a corner like this is when I double click. And that is very important here. I double click so that anchors there. But then when I come to here, I'm going to click again. And now watch what happens now to that straight line as I move to this side here. I didn't double click on that curve. I just simply clicked. Here I'm going to double click. So every time you're kind of at like a little corner there, right, when it kind of couches in, then you double click. Here, regular click. And it looks like it's going to go straight until I move my mouse and I double click. Come over to here, single click. But wait, what happens when I move this? I'm going to come over and notice how it's curving, right? And I'm going to double click again because I want this to be a straight line. Come over to here, right? And I'm going to double click again. And now come over to here, single click. See this? And now watch this. I come over to here and this is the end. So as I double click, and now that completes it, okay? So it's essentially, is it a curve? Just simply do a click, move your mouse, it's gonna create the curve for you, but when you're ready to sort of like mount it or root it down into a corner, then you double click, all right? So now let's go ahead and see what we can do with this guy here. Let's just maybe choose kind of like fun little cloud, just like that, that's great, okay? And I'm gonna remove my strokes, bring that down to zero this time, and you can see now you've got kind of a cool little logo there, okay? Or maybe this is for iCloud or anything like that. You can see this is just a perfect, nice little cloud. We're gonna learn about gradients in a little bit. Maybe you wanna change the color of it, but notice how easy it was to draw out something pretty complex and nice looking and very compelling with just one tool, and really that should take you about a minute. All right, so, but practice that because there is some nuance to it, clicking or double clicking, but the more you do it, the more you will intuitively get it. Okay, so we'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you. In this lesson, we are gonna discuss the pencil tool. Now, the good news is, is that the pencil tool is a lot more of a natural utility compared to how the pen tool is for other people. Meaning that every day, we're using a pen or a pencil, and we're just kind of pushing it to draw something out. And that's essentially what the pencil tool allows us to do. It's a lot more of a natural movement. So let's go over to here, where we're gonna find all of our options here. We have our pencil tool, our smooth tool, and a few other options. And I'm gonna very simply choose the pencil tool. And then I'm gonna take a look at my stroke color, and I'm gonna take a look at my stroke width. So I'm just gonna keep this at three. And very simply, I'm just gonna go ahead and draw something out. So let's just say I wanted to have a little bit of you know, texture on this drawing here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click and drag out, just like that. Not perfect, don't worry about it. Click and drag like that, okay? And I'm gonna kind of cross this over just like that, and then come over to here, okay? Great. Now, these are all anchor points, so because I messed this whole thing up, I can very, very easily use my direct selection tool and then bring those back out, no problem, okay? Now, what we're gonna do here is also kind of cross these over just like that, and then maybe I'm gonna join these together later on as well, and then maybe I'm gonna kind of do this thing here, and I'm just gonna kind of go over do it just like that. That's great. Let's go ahead and do a few more. Let's come over to here, just click and drag, click and drag, and I'll come across here. It's my mountains in the back, and I come over to here. So it'll be covered up with color momentarily, so it doesn't really matter. Come over to here, and then that's great. Okay, so very much how you think it might work, you just simply click and drag it. Now there are a bunch of options that we can do to then manipulate this, okay? Just like I said earlier, we can very easily come in and I can use my direct selection tool just to kind of bump this up a little bit and move this around and do all kinds of other things to this. So I grab the anchor point, grab my Bezier handles, and then I can manipulate it just like you can with the pen tool and just like you can with any other shape. It's fantastic. Okay, now let me go ahead and zoom out a little bit. And let's just see other things we may want to do in terms of smoothing things out or getting on a little bit more fidelity, whatever that's going to look like for you. Now, if you double click on the pencil tool, you're gonna to see we get a bunch of other options here for my pencil tool as I'm drawing them out, okay? So basically, if you're drawing out with your pencil tool and you're not getting the options that you want, you can make it so you're gonna have something that's gonna be more accurate or a little more smooth, okay? So before you draw it out, 
you might want to say, hey, listen, I always want it to be smooth. This is going to be more cartoony or this is going to be more accurate. So I really want to get much more precision on what I'm drawing. Totally, totally up to you. Okay. So if you do smooth, you're going to get way less anchor points. And if you choose accurate, you're going to get a lot more anchor points. Okay. Makes sense. Now, one thing I really liked, you can see here is keep selected. So as you're drawing it out, you may want to have it stay selected. So then you can move it around and manipulate it. Notice here is the Alt key or the Option key on the Mac, and it toggles to the Smooth tool. So we're going to do that in just a second, because notice how we have Smooth here, we have Smooth here. Well, when you hold down the Alt or Option key, it's going to allow you to very quickly go and smooth something that maybe wasn't so smooth to begin with. Okay, that's kind of important to know about. All right, that's great. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep this as is, just like that. And now let me just draw out another thing here. So I'm going to go ahead and click and drag out like that. And you can see how it kind of smoothed out my kind of jagged lines. Let me just kind of do a little rough thing right there and see how it just smoothed it out for me. See, I'm just going to oops, unsteady hand, bam, smooth it out for me. But now I'm going to hold down the alter option key. And you know what? Let's actually get it even smoother. See that how it just smoothed that out for me. Love that. Okay, let's do that again, but without really kind of drawing on anything. I'm just going to kind of just do like a little kind of a rough thing there. It smooths out for me. That's great. But you know what? Let's go ahead and double click. I'm going to make it more accurate this time. Okay. And I'm just going to kind of just go here just like that. Okay. That's great. And you know what? I kind of wish that was a little smoother. So I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option key and I'm right away at my smooth tool. Love that. And guess what? I'm getting less anchor points now and it's just smoothening it out. Love that. Now, if you wanted to use the smooth tool, you can very easily just go to the smooth tool itself and it essentially does the same thing. All right. Just what we just did there. I recommend using that modifier to hold down the alter option key and then smoothing it out as you do it on the fly. But if you decide to do it later on, just know that the smooth tool is there available for you anytime you want. Okay. That's great. Now, Let's take a look at this option here. Really, One of my favorite options is this join tool. Okay. So why is this so great? And why is it kind of living in the same place as my pencil tool? Well, notice this little cloud here that's kind of drawn in a very sort of rough way. The join tool allows us to sort of correct certain things after we've drawn them out that maybe we kind of overdid a little bit. So let me go ahead and just zoom in a little bit. And now I'm going to come over to here to my join tool and watch what I'm going to do. Very simply notice it's not even selected. I'm just going to kind of touch these. And now you see, bam, I've done that. That's great. Come over to here. Love it. Okay. Come over to there. That's fantastic. Come over to there and boom, beautiful. Okay. And now I can select this, do whatever I want to do to this, add in a little bit of color. Okay. Let's go ahead and add in that color. That's fantastic. I can then, if I wanted to, smooth this out a little bit more. I can even remove my stroke entirely if I want to, right? Just like that. Now it's just kind of a nice little floating cloud. Let's see what that looks like. Cool. And now I'm on my way to creating something. Okay. And it started off a little bit more rough, but using this fantastic tool, the join tool, I was able to get rid of some of those extra lines and now it's a lot smoother. Okay. So there's really a lot you can do with combining a lot of these tools together, meaning the pencil tool, the smooth tool, and now finally this amazing tool, the join tool, right? For getting rid of some of those extra overlapping drawing points that you may have done with your pencil. So you don't have to worry about overdoing it. You don't have to worry about getting perfection, right? You can really just adjust it after the fact. Okay. So practice this, have fun, and we'll see you in the next lesson, everyone. In this lesson, we are going to discuss the Shape Builder tool. Now, the Shape Builder tool allows us to create complex shapes while combining several different simple shapes to make other types of shapes. Now, you'll see here in front of me, I have a bunch of circles and some rectangles and some diamonds and such. And I'd like to make more complex shapes out of these. Now, you're going to see here on the left-hand side, I have my Shape Builder tool right there. 
Okay, you see the little circles. If it's not showing there, you can always right click in this area and you'll see here I might have my live paint bucket, etc. But we're going to be working off of this one right here in just a little bit. That's where you can find it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to use the Shape Builder tool initially and you're going to see there's some nuance because sometimes you want to create a new shape by combining shapes and then other times you want to create a new shape by taking away another part of the shape. Okay, so let's just see what we can do here. So let's just go ahead and first of all select, let's just say these, let's just say these two. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and select that and that shape right there. They're both selected. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to here to my shape builder tool and just very simply click and drag. And now you'll see that this has now become one shape. It's kind of eaten away at that stroke and then gone through this stroke and then bam, I'm good. Let's go ahead and do the same thing with this one and go ahead and select that other shape. And once again, I'm going to go over here to my shape builder tool and just very simply click and drag. So you'll notice here, as I'm doing it this time, I get a little plus sign and I get these little kind of mesh marks to tell me that is about to be blended together with this guy. And you can see here, that's now blended together. And now you can see beautifully, I've got that going on. Okay, love that. Let's go ahead and see what we can do in a slightly different way for my shape builder. Now I'm gonna make this into a little wrench on this side. I'm gonna now go ahead and now click on this, drag it up here. And you can go as far as you want with it, but making sure that both of them are selected and you might want to make sure you center things and all that good stuff there. And certainly we can do an exercise on that real quick. Let's make sure that the, both of these are selected and I'm going to go over here to my properties panel and then making sure that I am now aligning it to what I'm going to align it to my selection and then very simply make sure that they are now centered. Perfect. Now I have that perfectly centered. I'm very happy with that. And I'm just going to go ahead and give this a little nudge. That's great. And now what I'm going to use this shape builder tool to do is to use this essentially like a stencil to make it so it's going to eat away at this. I don't really care about this rectangle. I'm just going to use it to basically kind of chisel a hole into this little space there. Very good. So now I'm going to go ahead and click this one and click this one and now go back to my shape builder tool and this time this is very important I'm gonna hold down the alt or option key notice how I now get a minus sign as I do that you see that I'm gonna simply click and drag let go and bam just like that I've now got a whole new shape let's go ahead and try that in a slightly different way let's go over to here to this top part I'm gonna go in there and now let's make sure that both of these objects are selected got that and now Go to my shape builder tool hold down my alter option key and now notice i get my little mesh marks and also my little minus sign and it's done when i click on it beautiful now let's just do a few more i'm just going to go ahead and select this guy there again i'm going back to my regular selection tool now selecting this shape going over here to my shape builder tool and then watch this holding down the alter option key i'm just going to go ahead and click and drag into that and now i've got kind of an interesting looking hammer there Let's go ahead and bring these guys up into here. And I'm going to lock this layer so it doesn't get in the way. So let's just go ahead and do that. And I don't want to have that purple thing moving around on me. So I'm going to lock that. Good exercise. And now let's just go ahead and select all of these. I'm going to nudge that up. So they're just kind of touching each other just like that. And I'm going to use it to kind of get rid of all these little teeth here. So let's go ahead and select both the saw and my little diamonds. I'm going to use my shape builder tool and holding down the alter option key. Bam, bam. You can see how easy that is. And it gives us a nice feedback with the little mesh markings there. Very cool. Let's do a couple more selecting and selecting. Go to my shape builder tool and just also notice the keyboard shortcut if you want to start using that very often is shift m that's gone and that one's not selected see that so it probably won't work see that so it's very important that you get close in when you have kind of more sort of you know advanced or more sort of you know uh, sophisticated types of shapes that might require some zooming in and you might want to come in a little bit more here so then i would just want to choose this guy here and this and then go back to my shape builder tool 
and just say, you know, thanks, I don't need you anymore. Cool. Now I got a nice little handle. Let's zoom out. And that is beautiful. Love that. So you can see how this can be used for so many different things. Okay. So as you start to kind of build things out, you start to use your imagination, you start to use different little pieces of the puzzle to then start to kind of stencil your way through one object to create a different type of object. So this is really good for kind of creating kind of clean lines. You see characters might do this. You might have a shadow on top of somebody's face, or you might have maybe just sort of a lip on top of a plant pot, something like that. Just use the Shape Builder tool to kind of a nice clean line that conforms to the edge or the inside of another object. All right, practice this and we'll see you in the next lesson. In this lesson, we're going to explore the Pathfinder panel. In the Pathfinder panel, you're going to find a whole bunch of different shape building tools to be able to create multiple shapes out of combining different shapes together. Now, we're also going to learn about how to create compound shapes. You're going to see what that means in a little bit, but it's very important to understand that when we create a shape, we're not necessarily creating a compound shape that allows us to then manipulate it after it becomes that particular shape. That's known as a compound shape, giving us the ability to then manipulate it after the fact. Well, first of all, how do we get to our Pathfinder options? Well, if I go over here to Window and I come down here to Pathfinder, you're gonna see I have my Pathfinder panel that appears here, and you're gonna see I have something called my Shape Modes and I have my Pathfinders. So if you move your mouse over, you can see what they are. And you're gonna see that this is called Unite, this is called Minus Front, intersect and exclude. But you'll also see that when you mouse over it, it's going to say, if you want to create a compound shape, you should do alt and click as you're doing that. So I'm going to show you kind of what they do, but I'm also going to show you what the distinction is between doing something that's a not compound shape and a compound shape. So let's just go ahead and just highlight everything here. That's great. And now very simply, I'm just going to unite this. Now, Unite does what you expect it to do. It unites the two, and if I undo, you'll see that, well, it shows the color of the top shape on the Layers panel, okay? So that's great, so that's how I was able to do that. So I'll go ahead and do that one more time, and you can see how this is one shape, right? It's now united. So now I'm now creating one shape out of two. I'm gonna go ahead and undo that, undo that again. But this time, what I wanna do is I'm gonna hold down the Alt key as I click on this, and you'll see that something else happens now. You'll notice that it's still united. It does all the same colors and everything. But now I have the option for now manipulating this shape and this shape in case I change my mind after the fact. So if I double click now, you'll see I'm now able to get into that shape and then maybe I'm going to move it in this way. So it's dynamic, so I can then change it and then move it around here, move it around there, and now experiment with all the different things I might want to do. Okay, that's great. So now I'm making a snowman or making a Russian doll. Okay, that's great. But because I held down the Alt or Option key on my keyboard as I did that, it's now a compound shape. All right, and then you're gonna have the ability to do that with all of these shape modes. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead. I'm now in this isolation mode. So I'm gonna get back out of this, come back out of it. Very good, now here I am. And now let's go ahead and just see what these guys do. Highlight both of them. I'm gonna say minus front. Think about what's happening here. That's in the front. So it's gonna subtract it from there. Now I'm creating a different shape. Okay, so if you wanted to create a crescent moon, right? Or this is somebody's hat or a helmet or something like that, you can very easily do that just by combining two different shapes. All right, I'm gonna undo that. And again, I'm gonna hold down the Alt or Option key this time. Now I still have this ready. And then watch this. I can now come into here by double clicking. I'm just gonna go ahead and nudge this and I'm gonna get a very different shape coming in this way, get a very different shape, but I now have the option to be able to do that after the fact, because it's now a compound shape. So very important to understand the distinction and to really understand the benefit of this. All right, let's go ahead and just try a few more. This time I'm gonna double click on my canvas and that takes me out of isolation mode. That's maybe a little bit easier. All right, now let's try intersect. All right, so let's go ahead and highlight both of these and choose intersect and right where they intersect you can see how it just creates a shape based off that intersection let's go ahead and undo that and then notice what color wins the battle is the one that's on top 
And you can guess if I hold down the Alt or Option key, I do that. And now notice I still have these guys and I can go ahead and just double click on that to isolate it. And now I can move it this way, making it smaller, making it bigger. And I have all that control now after the fact because it's a compound shape, okay? Very good. And now exclude, let's see what that does. Highlight that and we're gonna see what exclude does. You can see right from the middle, it's just gonna take that away. Now, let me just tell you right now that I have a nice description of all the things that we can do in both the shape modes and the pathfinders down below here. Now, I may come back to this and refer to them, but just know this is gonna be a nice little resource for you in case you forget what it does, but you'll always be able to just test it out and see what they do just by trial and error. Okay, so let's now go ahead and go over to here to this section where we're gonna start working with our pathfinders. Okay, so let's just see what this does now. Now the pathfinders don't have the ability to do a compound shape. So pretty much what you see is what you get by the time you're done. So let's go ahead and see what that's gonna do. I'm gonna highlight all these and you're gonna see what this does now. Something kind of deceiving. It actually is dividing this into several different separate objects. You can't really tell that that's happening, but if I click away, come back here, I'm gonna go ahead and double click and double click. You'll notice that this is now a shape. This is now a shape. This is now a shape and continue to double click to kind of get into it. Okay, that's now a shape. So now you can see it's dividing it. Okay, so it's actually done kind of a neat thing. So I'm gonna undo a few times and we'll go back to where we were. We're basically just using all the shapes and all the different strokes and everything, the overlap to then create several different shapes by division. Okay, so kind of cool. It's kind of like a big cookie cutter that goes right into all of them. All right, so pretty cool. Let's go ahead and try trim. See what that does. Come to here. And you're gonna see what that does, okay? Now, this might be a good opportunity for us to come down here and let's take a look and see what our description says. So we can see here, this tool cuts away from the parts of the shape that overlap, okay? That you can probably guess that, right? So we come back to here and you can see trimming does what we expect it to do, okay? So they overlap, we can see here now, it's gonna do that same thing. When I click on that, you can see it's now created several different shapes from the ones that overlap. You say, oh, okay, it's kind of hard to see what it does until you double click in there and you start to kind of like take it apart a little bit. So let's undo that and see kind of where we started from again. These guys kind of overlapped, even all of the strokes overlapped. So they all went away. And then basically this created a new shape that created a new shape as well. Okay, so kind of nice to think about we have these great options. Now let's try merge. All right, so again, highlight all of these. Let's find merge right there. And you can see what merge does. Okay, that's great. And now I come to here, that's all one shape. And now if I double click on it, you can see that does that. And that merged these guys together. That's kind of a nice little logo there. Double click on that. And see that merged these two together while now separating these out. So let's go back down, in case this is confusing. Let's go back down to what we have written here. This tool combines two shapes into a single shape while preserving any areas of overlap, okay? So that one might be a little bit more confusing to understand, but you can see we have two shapes into a single shape, which was that bottom part, while preserving any areas of overlap, okay? So again, this will be just kind of a trial and error for you. All right, now cropping. Let's actually read what it says before we even get into it, okay? So this is gonna have a little bit more of a kind of lengthy description. The crop option crops the part of the shape that are outside of the shape you're using to crop. To use this option, you need to have two or more objects with one object acting as the crop shape. So think about that. You have one object that's the crop shape. When you select the object and click on the crop option in Pathfinder, the parts of the object that are outside the crop will be deleted. Okay, so let's just see what's happening here you can see how we have these three shapes and I'm gonna choose crop right here. And now you can see it's now created a completely different shape based off of what we have, right? So if you look at what's happening underneath here, this is essentially what we're gonna get, okay? Because where they all kind of overlap is essentially gonna be cropped, right? Around what we wanna keep. So it's kind of the opposite of what you may sort of like 
want in real life because maybe you can't see that but you might get sort of like unexpected things and have some new kind of creativity around that all right so again kind of neat now let's go back down here let's check out outline the outline option in pathfinder is used to create a new object that outlines the outer edge of the selected object the new object is created based on the shape of the selected object and the thickness of the outline can be adjusted Okay, so let's just see what that looks like. Let's go ahead and just highlight that and we'll come back again. And you can see, essentially we get a whole bunch of outlines, but now I'm gonna go ahead and increase the stroke so we can see what that looks like. And now we have a very different shape as a result. And again, if we come back out of this, we'll see what that originally looked like with those different colors, just like that. Okay, but it's kept those colors, put them as an outline and now You've essentially got those outlines. In my opinion, probably not as useful as some of the other ones because you might want to just be able to create that yourself. Okay, but again, it's really good for maybe randomizing some of your creativity. And minus back, that's going to pretty much do what you expected to do. Let's go ahead and choose that. And you'll see it just takes away those two objects that are in the back, keeping the foreground object, maintaining that, but still kind of chiseling away at those. Again, do it one more time. You can see here's my foreground object these guys are now going to kind of get chiseled away even look at the markings around there you can see my little outlines of the shapes do it one more time bam there you go and now i've got kind of a neat little shape i wouldn't want to have to draw this out maybe i got the beginning of um umbrella okay kind of cool and i was able to do that with these three different shapes so sometimes you got to be a little more mechanical a little more creative to visualize these but as you start to do it more and more, you're going to see that you're going to develop a pattern and a strategy. Okay, so practice that. Know that you got all these resources. Take a look at these and eventually become second nature for you. And we will see you in the next lesson. In this lesson, we are going to discuss the scissor, knife, and eraser tool. These are going to be kind of destructive, but we're going to try to use them in a little more sort of artistic ways. All right, so what we're going to do is very simply, we're going to go over to here to where the tools live, and you're going to see that we have our eraser, our scissors, and our knife tool. And they all do different things, but they're all kind of part of the same category of the different things that they could do, right? So let's just start from the top and I'm just gonna simply do what my eraser does, right? So very simply, you're gonna see there's my eraser and if I wanted to make it bigger, I'm just using my right bracket key on my keyboard to be able to do that because my eraser tool is essentially a brush just like anything else. So if I have this really big one right there, I'm gonna be able to erase really big just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo that and this time I'm gonna use my left bracket tool to make it a little bit smaller, okay? Very good. Now, let's kind of create the illusion of sort of a broken heart. And what I'm gonna do is very simply just kind of mow my way through this heart. So I'm just gonna just very simply just kind of click and click and click and drag and drag and drag and drag, right? And come all the way to the end, I let go. And now you can see I've created this nice cool effect there. Okay, and now these are in fact now separate objects. See that, now I can move it around and do whatever I want with it. Okay, now these started off as just basic shapes, right? This was just a heart, and now I was able to create that really nice and easy. Let's go ahead and do that one more time. I'm gonna go ahead and just undo that. And this time I'm gonna go ahead and make my eraser a little bit bigger. It's gonna kind of blast that up just like so. And now let's just go ahead and do it one more time. And now you can see, just like that, got a very different look. All right, awesome. So let's now undo that, and I'm gonna come back to where I was before, and let's now explore a different one. And this time, we're gonna do the knife tool. I'm gonna skip over the scissors tool, because it's probably the most kind of different between all three of these. But the knife tool kind of does what you expect it to do. It's gonna allow me to just kind of be a little more sort of precise with my sort of destruction, if you will. Now, just let's just see an example of what I can do. I'm gonna choose the knife tool. And now I'm just gonna just start chiseling away 
at what I want to work with, right? So let's just go ahead. I'm going to take a bite out of this heart. I'm just going to kind of do that, 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 and come around here. And now when I finish, you'll notice how I get kind of a whole bunch of new anchor points there, and I get all that good stuff right there. Well, that's indicating to me that this is a totally different shape. And when I know that something's a different shape, I know that I can go over to here to my direct selection tool and then select on that object. And now you can see I have a very different shape. Okay, and I can go ahead and just try that again. Let me go ahead and undo just so we can shoot one more time. Let's go one more time to our knife tool. Let's try it on this side. I'm just going to do kind of some jagged ones just like that. Come over to here. It doesn't matter about the outside because I'm not really touching that so much. And now, very cool, I can go ahead and select this, hit the delete key, and now I've got that going on. All right, so very cool, very happy with that. Now, all of these are still editable. They're all still selectable. They're all still, you know, I can manipulate them however I want to. So if I wanted to come back here and then just select this, Right, I can then manipulate it here. I can even take away my stroke. I can do all kinds of different things to this after the fact. Right, So I'll just go ahead and bump this up, bump this to the right, just using my arrow keys to be able to do that. That's nice. Okay, So you've got lots of options to do all kinds of different things with this, even after the fact, even after you used different tools to then manipulate it. Okay, So the knife option, let's just do a completely different one now. I'm going to go ahead and undo everything I did there. Let's just do it a slightly different way. So I'll just go ahead and undo. And there you have it. And now let's just try doing what we did the first time when we did it with our eraser tool. I'm just going to do that same thing. I'll do this. And you'll notice how it just kind of cuts it in half. Now, maybe that's cool. Maybe that's what I want to do. Because now I have the ability to then select these separately and just do that and do that. OK? So it doesn't necessarily erase anything. It just kind of cuts right through the object itself, whereas the eraser tool actually got rid of all the content based off of the width of the brush. Remember how I made the brush wider? So that actually made a big old gap in between of it, right? So now I don't want that necessarily. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. Well, now let's finally talk about our scissors tool. Now the scissors tool, if you think about what a scissors does for let's say a seamstress, right? So a seamstress will come in and they will they will now trim at the hem of your pants or your shirt or something like that. And that's what the scissors tool is gonna allow us to do. And in this case, it's gonna trim where? At an anchor point. So if you wanna be very precise about how you're going to trim things, you would use the scissors tool. So now if I click on this, you can see I went right to the anchor point, and I'm gonna go right to that anchor point, and you'll notice how things just kinda of shifted a little bit. right? And you're gonna see how this is now split in half. So I go back to my direct selection tool, and now you're gonna see I can now move this and move that. All right, and that's gonna be potentially a common thing that you do with different shapes. Maybe you've got a circle and you want to make a half a circle. Maybe you've got a diamond and you want to make it into two triangles. You can very, very easily do that. But the trick here is just remembering that you've got to select right here on an anchor point in order to make that work, right? Because you'll get a bunch of error messages if you're not on an anchor point when you're using the scissors tool. Okay, so very good. Three really, really useful tools. And they're kind of unexpected because you wouldn't think that, you know, vector graphics can be used the same way as, let's say, you know, bitmap graphics. But surprise, surprise, they can. Following up from our last exercise, you'll notice that there is a little bit of a problem with my heart, how I left it here. Okay, so you can see how when I cut it, the stroke kind of lost a little bit of a connection to the other side of the heart on both sides there. Now, what's actually happening here? Well, I'm going to click with my direct selection tool back on the heart. And I want you to notice how there's an anchor point here. There's an anchor point here. Now, what's actually happening is the fact that these guys are no longer connected. They're part of the same unit, but technically speaking, they are not joined together. 
So that's why we're not seeing this complete kind of looped stroke that's going from here to here to finish off the shape. And this is going to happen a lot when you start working with things like the scissors tool, right? So when you do the scissors tool, you're going to see it's going to just completely divorce it from the rest of it unless we then rejoin the paths. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, I'm going to show you two ways we can do it. One is with the menu, and the other is a really handy keyboard shortcut to be able to do that. So let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. And you're going to see that I have these path points once again. So I'm going to choose with my direct selection tool this anchor point there. And then holding down the shift key, I'm going to go ahead and choose that one. So notice that these are solid blue, solid blue, and these are not. These are both selected. So what I need to do is join these anchor points together. All right, so how do I do that? Well, if I go over here to the object menu, you're going to see that way down below is this thing called path. And then over here is join. And you'll also notice the keyboard shortcut. Pretty cool. So I do that and now I choose it. And then just like that, it's now closed the path. All right, so then it doesn't kind of leak out. It's now all one and the same. If I make a change to the stroke, I do all kinds of different things to it, then I'm not gonna have any kind of unexpected results. Okay, and you can see now when I make some changes to that, you can see now this now is selected. You can see it's white. I'll just go ahead and make it maybe a green color. Very good, and now they're all one big happy family. Very good, and let's just for fun and good measure, let's do it on this side one more time, making sure that my direct selection tool is selected. And I'm gonna click on that and notice there is an anchor point right there. And then you might see that there's some extra ones there too, just kind of the way that things may be kind of like bulb out a little bit, but that's gonna be fixed in this case because we're now gonna join them together. So I hold down the shift key. Now they're both selected, great. And then nothing else should be selected. Just make sure we have that. Bam, and then bam. That's why zooming in can be really helpful. So let's go ahead and select that. I can see it there. Hold down the shift key, select that. And this time I'm gonna use the keyboard shortcut of Command or Control J, and bam, you can see, there you have it. It's now joined together as one unit. I can go back here and select it, all right? And you can see that's all one. Let's choose a different color this time. Let's do pink. That's very nice, and you can see Love it, love it, love it. And of course, all this can be manipulated. Same thing as if I go back to my direct selection tool, I can then go ahead and manipulate this, do whatever I wanna to do to it. Maybe I even wanna get rid of this. So I would go back over to here to my delete anchor point tool. And you know what? There's an extra anchor point there. Now, that's what was causing that little bulbousness. Okay, great. And is there another one right there? Nope, that one looks pretty good. And I'm pretty happy. So this is very much about kind of like maintenance and troubleshooting because a lot of times this is gonna happen. And especially when you're doing your own drawing of some kind and like, let's say you scan the drawing and then when you, you know, come bring it all together and maybe you're doing it manually, maybe you're even doing tracing, not being able to join the paths can prevent a number of different sort of unexpected results. So joining paths using Command or Control J or using your object menu can really help you out and make you accomplish the things you want to accomplish without any unpredictable results. Okay, so practice that here or with other different tools and different objects that you'll be drawing out, and we'll see you in the next lesson. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get the files the instructor used in this tutorial and follow along, click over there. And click over there to watch more videos on YouTube from Simon Says It.